All right, so uh, in this second part of the video, we're going to look into the specifics of our lazy evaluation in Haskell. And um, what I had at least uh, left you with in the in the last video was that uh, if I call, let's say, I sort the insertion sort on, let's say, a list, and my list over here is, uh, let's say, six, one, two, right? And uh, if I take the head, if I take the head on the entire thing, on the entire thing, that'll give you back the minimum of the of that list that you pass in okay so that's the kind of the evaluation or the kind of the approach of looking at to get the get the minimum of my of my list here and um, just to just to get some discussion moving at least in this part of the video what we're going to do first thing is we're going to define we're going to write an implementation for our for a head here so head the way head is defined at least in Haskell is that it has the following type signature it basically takes in a list of A's and where A, of course, is acting as a type variable there, and it gives you back the first item from the first item from that list of A's there, and that value also where you has a type that happens to be in this case a lowercase a. How would I implement this? How would I implement a head? Uh, 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 what what would one possible implementation of the head be? So head, if it's called on an empty list, I'm going to say let's give back an error. Let's give back an error that you cannot call head on an empty list. Okay, so some kind of a meaningful, uh, uh, kind of a kind of a, a string there. That, that, that gives back some kind of a useful error message to the user and um, I'm going to say head head on some some kind of a list that at least contains one item right and that's I'm using this pattern matching by, by the by the cons operator this is going to be this is just going to be the value x there okay so let's let's keep that kind of kind of on the side right now I'm going to revisit this a little bit later as we start to work on our as to start to work on a lazy, lazy, lazy evaluation. And um, the first thing that's going to happen here is let's see what happens when the user calls when the user calls head on on this on this entire piece here. So the user says, "All right, let's 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 call this." And um, if I were to call this uh, again, if you would write this as function composition, I mean this is completely equivalent to this is completely equivalent to saying head function composition. I sort, I sort, and uh, of course you pass in your list there, which is six one. Two and of course this can also be written as as head dot i sort right and you can use a dollar sign and that gives you six one and two right they're just they're just three different ways of writing the same thing okay so let's look at let's look at the approach that we started with which was uh, which was this piece here uh, the first thing is spaces are left associative okay and those are basically function application so when i have something like this when i have something like this what's happening is this entire piece this entire piece is passed as a parameter is passed as a parameter into into head right head basically takes in this entire this entire piece there and um and uh, as as i call the function head and because haskell is lazy none of this none of, you can you can think of this as an unevaluated expression which is my thunk which is my thunk here which hasn't yet been evaluated i really don't know what is i sort of 612 there okay i don't really have an output just yet it just gets passed in as a parameter into head there now what does head do here well the first thing head does is it tries to figure out okay whatever you have passed in and uh, just to kind of draw this a little bit more from a picture point of view you can think about this uh, as part of this implementation here Head has just received. Head has just received this 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 kind of this thunk here. Okay. Head has just received this thunk here. Okay. This thunk happens to be this unevaluated expression, which is this I sort of six comma one comma two, right? And um, the first thing I have in pattern matching here is, is this is this thunk is this thunk, and empty list. Right, so Haskell needs needs to perform some kind of a minimal, minimal, minimal work on this tongue to really figure out if this tongue is really some kind of a list there. Right? Can I can I can I figure this out? Whether either this is really whatever this tongue is, is this really an empty list? First question, or if it is something that happens to be a non-empty list, meaning something of this kind, x cons xs. Okay, I need to perform some kind of work here. So, as it gets called on head there. Okay, and as head receives this thunk here, and because I need to perform whether this thunk is an empty list or some kind of a list that at least contains one item, some work needs to be performed here. So the first thing that happens now is I need to perform what exactly is that thunk equal to. Well, this thunk is I sort six one two. So I'm going to start working on this I sort I sort six comma one comma two to figure out what exactly this piece here is. Now, as I, as I start to work on this tongue here, 
on this tank here, which we're going to put it over there, that's the univided tank here, okay, I start to figure out what this piece is, which means that in order to figure this piece out here, this, this list over here now gets passed in as a parameter to isort there. And that's what isort does. isort takes in a list, a list of integers there. So the moment I pass in this list of integers into isort here, first thing isort need to do is, well, whatever you have passed me, whatever you have passed me into isort, is this piece an empty list via pattern matching? Or is this something that happens to be not an empty list there? So isort, if I look at the implementation of isort here, okay? So just so that we are a little bit aware of how things are moving along, Okay, this entire piece, this entire piece, this thunk over here, let's call it thunk in green there. Okay, and I'm just going to, just for clarity purposes, I'm going to say this, this piece over here is that, is that, is that thunk, which is, which is right now getting evaluated, right? We're just in the process of kind of evaluating that thunk there. Okay, now as this, as this green piece is getting evaluated, I'm going to say, okay, I sort, I sort, I sort receives this kind of this thunk, which is now this blue, this, this, this blue thunk, which happens to be the list 612. Right, this is the list six one two. Okay, I'm just using those notations there just so that we are aware what this thunk is actually equal to. But because Haskell is lazy, we don't really know that as of now when I sort gets called here. When I sort gets called with this with this thunk here, it needs to perform some kind of a basic basic evaluation to figure out whether this thunk is an empty list or is basically something something that happens to be can be uh, a, a list that contains at least one item. Now, whatever this list is, this list, we know this list can be broken up. It can be broken up using pattern matching. What we really know is it's something equal to, equal to uh, six cons two, six cons one, cons two, and so forth, right? So what I know is that this piece, this piece is some kind of a thunk, a smaller thunk there. This six over here could be another thunk right there. And I know that this bigger thunk, this bigger thunk can be broken up. I really don't care what the first thunk is and the value of the second thunk, but I know that this can be broken up into something that happens to be the following, the following piece here. Okay. And uh, this thunk over here, the small thunk over here is the value six. And this piece over here, this piece over here is the value, is the value actually one comma uh, one cons, two cons with the empty list. Okay. And, um, but that's, that's, that's all for Haskell because Haskell is lazy and because it's lazy, it has done the minimal work just to make sure that the pattern matching with the first cons over there gets applied, meaning that this piece, this piece starts executing. And what I have now is, what I have now is um, uh, insertion, insertion of, of X followed by whatever it is I sort of XS. Okay, so just so that we are we're on track here, this bigger thunk over here, this green piece, as you start evaluating this, we got it broken down into I sort of this of this blue thunk. This blue thunk was again broken up into these smaller pieces, the small thunks there, which is now equal to, which is now equal to whatever I have, insertion of X of I sort of XS, which is equal to insertion of X. Okay, whatever that XS and uh, I sort I sort of XS. Okay, so I sort of XS. What exactly is this? Uh, is this excess here? This excess over here is this is this tongue there, right? This 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 blue shaded tongue, right? Is this piece over here? Okay, is exactly is exactly this piece over here, which I'm calling on on I sort. And um, the first thing that I do here is I'm saying insertion on that list X, okay, on that item X there, and my second parameter is this unevaluated tongue, which is I sort of excess. What does the function insertion do at this point? Insertion gets called, insertion gets called, which takes in which takes in this x and it takes in the very first parameter there is some kind of an empty list there. So insertion gets called, insertion gets called with that, with that, with that thunk there. Okay. Which is my just containing the value x. Okay. And uh, then I have the second piece over here, which is an empty list. I mean first one I match whether the second expression is actually an empty list and the empty list over here is this is this piece there which is my i sort i sort of of excess okay now remember this is right now a thunk it's a thunk that hasn't been evaluated yet but before i can figure out whether i'm going to whether i'm going to call the base case or whether i'm going to call the recursive case whether it's this piece or is this piece right I need to do some minimal work. I need to do some minimal work on this thunk. I need to do some work on that thunk, whether this piece gets matched, the empty list, or this piece over there, 
gets matched. Okay, now how do I do that? Well, let's figure out what is I sort of excess then. What is I sort of excess? Well, this gets called on the I sort uh, function, which is defined right over here. And um, whatever this thunk is, this excess is basically is basically this this uh, this this piece of the thunk which was defined over there. Okay, so at this point, again, I go inside my recursion to figure out what exactly is this I sort of excess. I sort of excess is nothing but is nothing but this entire piece. This entire piece is nothing but again insertion insertion of x. Okay, and this x in this case is going to be the second item from that from that uh, bigger list, which was my original list was six one two. So just to put some notations here, just so we don't get confused, this piece eventually is basically in this 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 piece over here is my is my value six there. And uh, at this point, we'll say insertion insertion of uh, one. And I sort on excess, and this is going to be I sort. On excess, which at this point contains contains a list of two. Okay, so you call insertion again. When insertion gets called, right? Because I'm calling insertion, we're passing in this parameter, and this thunk gets passed in as a parameter to insertion. Insertion at this time, <coughs> at this time, using pattern matching figures out whether it needs to pass, it really needs to cause the base case or the recursive case there. And um, it really needs to figure out what is this thunk equal to. So you're going to call, you're going to call what is this I sort on, on this list of, of two there. So you call, you call this uh, function again, at which point you have, at which point this thunk, this thunk is going to be equal to, is going to be equal to insertion of two on I sort, I sort of an empty, empty list. Okay, this entire piece, this entire piece has been broken down into insertion of two of I sort of an empty list. Okay, now what exactly is this piece going to be equal to? Okay, so to figure out what is insertion of two on I sort of an empty list, I'm going to say at this time the insertion function gets called, okay, with I sort of the empty list. Okay, and when insertion gets called, uh, I need to figure out what exactly is the value of the thunk that happens to be I sort on an empty list. Okay, I sort on an empty list, I sort on an empty list is nothing but the empty list itself. So, just to make it things a little bit clear, what exactly has happened with our lazy evaluation over here, this entire piece, this entire thunk that was passed in as a parameter into head has been, has been broken down, has been broken down into something that looks like the following. I have insertion, insertion of six, followed by followed by insertion, insertion of one, followed by insertion of two with an empty list. Okay, that's exactly what has happened here. As I keep on going around here, you have something that looks like looks like this. And this green thumb, this green thumb that I had originally has been simplified. It has been simplified to something that now looks like this. This is basically, basically a little bit more of some work that has happened on that green thumb, right? Which was I sort of 612. This is a green thumb, what it looks like right now. But again, head, if you look at this head here, head still requires some work here. I mean, you cannot figure out just by looking at the thunk there, if this thunk is equal to via pattern matching of this kind, right? We don't know that yet. We don't know whether this entire thunk is equal to that pattern matching of x cons with the excess here. So what happens now is we're going to work again on this, on this green thunk here and uh, insertion of two with an empty list Insertion of two with an empty list is nothing but just the just the list that contains x. So this piece here, this piece here in blue can be equal to can now be equal to a list that contains the item two. Okay, and uh, so again, just to bring things a little bit clear there, this entire piece, this entire piece, must be the base case here, has been evaluated evaluated to to this piece there. Okay, and uh, I have one. I then have that insertion there. Okay, I have my parenthesis, then I've got my six there, and then I've got my insertion there. Okay, now what is insertion of one with a list that just contains two in it? Well, insertion of one, right, with a list that just contains a two is, is this piece that gets evaluated now because I know I can break up, I can break up that, uh, that list that contains two while pattern matching into that recursion case there, right? This base case doesn't get evaluated. And now compare X and Y, so my x at this time is basically one. My y in this case, y in this case is two. 
and if you want to think about YS, it's nothing but just your just your MP list. Okay, so how is one? What is one when compared against two? So one is definitely less than or equal to two. So I can rewrite everything, everything that's in this in this piece there, in this piece there, as something that happens to be one, cons, cons y, and y in this case is two, cons y s, which is my empty list. Okay, now I've got six there. Let's put a six there and let's put insertion. Okay, everything of this piece, everything over here got evaluated to this piece there. And uh, again, keep in mind we're still in this, in this, in this green tongue, right? Everything in here is that is a green tongue there. Okay, now what exactly is insertion of six with with that piece there? What is that equal to? Well, this is going to be equal to this is going to be equal to where uh, I'm going to call my recursion case again, where my x now is going to contain the value six. Okay, x is now this value six there. My y, my y is going to contain the value one. And whatever I have after that, whatever I have after this, this list over here is basically my ys. Okay, so uh, if I compare 6 against 1, well, if I compare 6 against 1, I know that 6 is definitely not less than or equal to 1. So is the otherwise or this piece of my guard that starts executing the, the otherwise uh, uh, aspect here because this condition is false, which means that this gets rewritten to y cons insertion of x, y, s. Why at this time? So this for this entire piece now, this entire piece over here, this entire piece over here is completely equal to y, which is going to be one, right? Cons, I have the cons there. Then I've got insertion, I've got insertion, and then I've got x space ys, and x over here is six, right? And then ys, and y is basically whatever is this piece of my list here, which is two cons, Whatever is the remainder thing. Okay. Now, this green tank, this green tank, which was over here, this entire green tank, which was this this piece here, got has got simplified. It has got simplified to something that looks like. Let me again use green color here. It has got simplified to something that looks like looks like this. Okay. Now, do I have I done enough work? Have I done enough work on the green tank so that head, which was called at the very first can now figure out that whatever this green tongue is, is basically something that happens to be a list that can be broken up by pattern matching, by pattern matching, that is x cons xs, right? This piece here, this one over here, this one over here is basically my x, and this entire piece over here that I have the remainder over here is basically my xs. And remember, the xs hasn't been evaluated here, because insertion of six with that list, two cons, the empty list, it's going to give you back some evaluation, right? Because this entire piece has been unevaluated just yet. It's just a tongue there. But I don't have to evaluate the tongue because I'm not ever using excess anywhere, anywhere in my implementation of the head function. So head at this time, head at this time has enough data, it has enough value that it can proceed with by just returning whatever x is, and x in this case is one. So the output over here, the output from this entire thing, the output from this entire thing is just equal to one. And that's it, your, 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 complete, your complete algorithm at this point stops because head has finished this aspect of execution. And the key here is, the key here is, you still have this portion of the list, which is excess, that hasn't yet been sorted. You don't even have to sort that thing. If this excess was really, really, really huge, just think about how much time you have saved here because you didn't even have to do all that, all that, all that sorting, right? With lazy evaluation, you got back exactly what you needed from this and head could just, just, just proceed with minimal work on the pattern matching and just return back whatever this, whatever this excess. So I hope you found this a little bit useful in terms of understanding how this lazy evaluation works out. And I'm more than happy to take up a few more examples if you want me to do that. But please, by all means, you may want to stop this video on many, many occasions. And I agree that things have got a little bit little bit messy there. But I, I, I hope you kind of understand, like I'm kind of trying to kind of drill down a little bit more further into, into giving you a good a kind of a good picture on how that big, huge green tank Right, where we try to usually all the point and purpose was is this big huge green tongue can be broken down into something into something that happens to be a smaller tongue 
okay and it could be something of a of a bigger thunk there right so this could be xs this could be x there and the moment i can write it in some kind of a, this form here where this green this entire big green thunk can be broken up into this kind here then whatever this x is whatever this x is basically gets returned to the user right and uh, if you're doing this on the console and uh, you will get back a value at the end at which point this thunk this smaller thunk does get evaluated it does get evaluated to give you back the value that contains so in this example x contains the value one right you get back some value that, that comes back to you okay so uh, so uh, that's kind of the that's just the idea i mean so you really really simple and nothing 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 complicated and uh, and just keep that in mind that it's the head that gets called first as the as the first function here because left is the spaces are left associative and has higher the most highest precedence and um, what gets passed into head is this is this entirely an unevaluated expression a thunk which is the i sort of 612 and finally we somehow figured out how to how to how to how to break that up into something that was originally that huge huge unevaluated expression into something that came to came to this piece there okay and then finally i could just return back one right from that uh, from that head there